Hello everyone, it's another weekend and you know what that means, especially this time on Channels Television. It's time for Metro File. Thank you so much for joining us again. I'm Ogechiku Wose. In the Igbo and indeed Nigerians led by the president, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, say goodnight to the Ikemba of Inewi, Dimchukwemeka Odumegu Ojoku. The Lagos Polo Club honors some distinguished members. <laughs> and 23 youths get empowered by the Nigerian bottling company, NBC. The week-long funeral of departed Igbo leader and Biafra symbol Dimchuku Emeka Odumegu Ojuku came to an end as his body was interred in his Nnewi country home, Anambra State, Southeast Nigeria, after a funeral mass was held at the St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church, Nnewi, Anambra State. Now we'll take a look at his life and his final journey. He was brave, determined to protect his people against all odds. He is the Ikemba of Newi, the ex Biafran warlord, leader of Ndigo, Dim Chikwemeka Odumegu Ojuku. Let us once give hope to our people and made them know and got them fixed on an axis. When you start fleeing, once you cross onto this area named Biafra, you are home. Chukwe Juku was born on November 4, 1933 at Zungeru in Niger State, northern Nigeria to Sir Louis Odumego Juku, a businessman from Newi, Anambra State. He began his educational career in Lagos, southwestern Nigeria. At 13, his father sent him overseas to study in the United Kingdom first at Emerson College and later at Lincoln College, Oxford University, where he earned a master's degree in history. He returned to Nigeria in 1956, where he joined the civil service as an administrative officer. In 1957, within months of working with the colonial civil service, he left and joined the military as one of the first and few university graduates to join the army. Ojuku's background and education guaranteed his promotion to higher ranks. Very, very, very clear. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Nigeria has always had a leader. And the problem is how good, <laughs> relatively good, is the leader. What leader lets on? No, Nigeria has always had a leader. Am I part of the leadership of Nigeria? He served in the United Nations Peacekeeping Force in the Congo under Major General Johnson Thomas Agui in Rossi. Ojuku was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel in 1964 and posted to Kano State where he was in charge of the 5th Battalion of the Nigerian Army. The history of Nigeria will be incomplete without the mention of Ojuku's name. He played a prominent role. Popularly known is his role in the Nigerian Civil War, which started as a result of his declaration of the Eastern Nigeria as a sovereign state of Biafra in 1967, a declaration which was born out of perceived injustice meted out to his people. He fought a good battle in the war front. The war ended with the declaration of no victor, no vanquish. Much later, Juku started fighting another battle, this time with his health, stroke and ailments that threatened the once strong and vibrant Biafran warlord and unfortunately led to his death in November 2011. On the day he was laid to rest, 
thousands of mourners, including President Goodluck Jonathan and his wife, state governors, top government functionaries, members of the international community, attended the final funeral ceremonies and internment of late Ikemba of Newi in his hometown, Newi, Anambra State. His coffin, draped in the Nigerian flag, was brought into the church for the funeral service. The Kimba of Nehri was buried with four military honors in his hometown after several funeral ceremonies in Abuja and the five southeastern states of Imo, Abia, Enugu, Ebon, and Anambra. Other states of the Federation also held ceremonies in honor of Ujuku, who bids the world a final goodbye at the age of 78. His wife, ex-beauty queen Bianca Ojuku and other family members have indeed lost a hero and with so much emotions she stares at the coffin bearing the remains of a beloved husband. Speaking at the ceremony, President Jonathan eulogized Ojuku, describing him as a man who saw beyond his contemporary. Governor of Anambra State, Peter Albi, had this to say. After the speech in a military parade, the body was taken to where it was finally interred. course was followed by the gun salute. Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku no doubt will forever be remembered for his courage and unwavering desire to fight for justice for his people. Well, he's no doubt an icon who played a key role in Nigerian's history. 
Okay, from Anambra State back to Lagos to witness the Black Tie Award and Fundraising Night organized by Lagos Polo Club, sponsored by MTN, to celebrate those promoting polo game in Nigeria. Civic Center in Victoria Island, Lagos came alive as guests arrived for the Lagos Polo Club Black Tie Award and Fundraising Night. Of course, nothing short of elegance could describe the look of the guests who graced this event. Lovers and fans of Polo Game could not miss this opportunity to relax and have a great time with Polo players on the one year This was indeed a night of great fun. It's important to know that this gathering, which was made possible by MTN Nigeria, is the first edition aimed at honoring polo players for what they've done and what they've been able to achieve, while also honoring past contributors who have served polo for a long time. Polo is all about tradition. This is a first. This, uh, this dinner that we're having, which is to commemorate the heritage of polo and the heritage of Lagos. The uh, brief history, Lagos Polo Club was established as a field for the British Army in 1908. And it became a club in 1930. And since then, it has been run, ostensibly still by the military, but gradually it ceded to a great variety of individuals from all walks of life. Like the chain, but want to be part of the high chain chain. We the captain as well, but I really got to go to I try to do many things differently. I try to encourage more polo, and I think that polo and Lagos polo club is in the rare form. I mean, you have many, many players. Right now, I struggle, I struggle with uh, chocolate at the weekend, where we used to. I used to organize eight, ten, twelve chocolate times, having to organize. To see chocolate to be in a two to three hour period. So I like that. It's a nice challenge. But before the awards started rolling out, some comedians in the house gave guests a good dose of laughter with their rip cracking jokes. Women have the need to voice their anger, to voice things. They just can't keep things to their chest. So do not provoke a woman. You're breaking up with a white woman, you can tell her it's over and she takes it like that and she leaves. You're breaking up with a black girl, a black Nigerian girl. She will reveal your entire secret. Baby, I have something to tell you. The same uh, this relationship. I'm tired. Stop going anywhere. And she's like, eh? Hey, really? Okay. No problem! No problem! Your neighbors are hearing No problem. No problem. What is no problem? No problem. And I can't. After that 
round of laughter it was time for the business of the night as there were days one after the other took to the podium to receive the award represents a testimony to the fact that polo is a renaissance sport in Nigeria and is gaining ground in international circuits. Well, being one of the first events that they are hosting, I think it went pretty well and um, I think there's still more to come with the new development that is going on in polo clubs. I think people should expect a lot more from them. I feel great, very happy. Um, I'm glad that all the hard work is being uh, rewarded. and. Um, we hope to continue to build on what we're doing and improve every year. The show was rounded off with musical performances from Tiwa Savage and M.I. The Nigerian Bottling Company, NBC, empowered 23 vibrant youths as they graduated set 21 from the company's technical training center in a beautiful graduation ceremony here in Lagos. The ceremony started with project exhibition tour. After that, the events got underway as the graduating students of the Nigerian bottling company NBC seemed ready to face the future which seems so bright for them after having completed this journey that started about two years ago. The franchise bottler of Coca-Cola products in Nigeria formally presented its latest graduates from its technical training center at a ceremony which took place recently. The 23 graduates have gone through a highly competitive screening exercise. Candidates with basic qualifications of National Technical Certificate or National Diploma in Mechanical or Electrical Engineering, who are not more than 25 years old, were admitted for a two-year intensive technical training certificate program. As part of the Nigerian Bottling Company's commitment to producing high-quality beverages, the company on March 1, 1996, established the MBC Technical Training Center for technical personnel in the beverage bottling industry. Since then, a lot of youth have benefited from the training through youth empowerment, which in turn impacts on the economy of the nation. We are very concerned about uh, authenticity, what I call authentic people. People of integrity, people who do what they say, people who look what they are. We don't want to be characters. We want people who is yes, yes, and who is no, is no. That's what I call being authentic. 
So as to come out of the spirit of the real world, I'm um, recommending to you that one of the values that we recognize at NBC is authenticity. We want to attend to it. It's about solving unemployment. The Technical Training Center trains young men and women in electromechanical and equipment maintenance courses and awards successful trainees with the MDC certificate in basic engineering practices and operations as well as maintenance of engineering equipment. So, it's having tools that could get him to support as electrician, electrical engineer, electrical plant manager, electrical everything. I want to tell you, brothers, your moral intellectual capital has been growing. We are sending you out to fly as eagles, as you take the next step on the ladder of your life. Nothing should deter you from succeeding. For the graduates, it's a dream come true. I feel, I feel on top of the world also. Not for me alone, but for my other youth there that if I make it, they will also make it. I bless God, I'm very happy, excited, and I can see this as a, as a dream come true. The excited graduates popped and danced in celebration. But this is the company's own way to empower the youth, which at least helps the unemployment situation in the country. Okay, viewers, this is where we wrap up the show this week. Until I come your way again next week, I'm Ogichi Gorsi.